Hello, in this video we'll be covering applications of trigonometry. Specifically, using right triangles to model certain surveying problems, but then using the laws of sines and cosines to do more surveying problems and navigation examples in problems that don't involve right triangles. So for example, a boat is offshore from a vertical cliff. The cliff is known to be 150 feet high. The angle of elevation between the boat and the top of the cliff is 15 degrees. How far is the boat from the cliff? This is a fairly practical example. A map might note that a given cliff is 150 feet high, and you can measure this angle of elevation from your boat. Let's make a sketch to model the situation. So here is our boat. Here is the cliff. It is known to be 150 feet high. We're presuming that it is vertical, so a right angle to the surface of the ocean and we measure a 15 degree angle of elevation to the top of the cliff. What we want to find is x, the distance from our boat to that cliff. So here's what we have. The tangent of 15 degrees, since we have a right triangle, is simply the opposite side, 150, divided by the adjacent side, x. This allows us to solve for x as 150 divided by the tangent of 15 degrees, which is approximately 559.8 feet. Next, the Eiffel Tower is 330 meters tall, including an antenna on its top. The angle of elevation from the base of a hotel to the tip of that antenna is 35.6 degrees, but the angle of elevation from the roof of the hotel to the tip of the antenna is 22.6 degrees, as shown in this picture. First, how far away is the hotel from the Eiffel Tower? Second, how tall is the hotel? So here is our diagram of our hotel. The Eiffel Tower has a known height, and we have two known angles of elevation from the base and top of the hotel, respectively. To measure how far the hotel is from the Eiffel Tower, we want to find this distance, x. So we get a right triangle. We have the angle of 35.6 degrees. The height of the Eiffel Tower gives us that opposite length, and the adjacent length, x, is the unknown distance to the Eiffel Tower. Again, we're going to use a tangent. The tangent of 35.6 degrees is 330 over x, which allows us to solve for x as approximately 461 meters. Now that we know our distance to the Eiffel Tower, we can answer this question of how tall the hotel is. So we're going to get a second right triangle. Now we know the distance to the Eiffel Tower, so we can take this smaller triangle up top and we know its base is 460.94 meters with an angle of elevation of 22.6 degrees. That will allow us to find this distance y. Notice that y is not the height of the Eiffel Tower. This y corresponds just to this distance right here. So finding this distance y, we're going to use tangent again. Tangent, by the way, is used very often because it will be used in problems where you are not involving the hypotenuse. And we can solve that y is approximately 191.87 meters. So that gives us y is 191.87, but that's not what we were asked to find. We were asked to find how tall the hotel is. But observe from our diagram, that the height of the hotel will be the height of the Eiffel Tower, 330 meters, minus this height y. That's 138.13 meters. Next up, to find the length of a lake, a surveyor begins at the west end of the lake, walks 400 meters northeast. She then makes a 140 degree turn to the right and walks 235 meters to the east end of the lake. Find the distance between the west end of the lake and the east end. So here's a sketch of our situation. We have a lake. We then walk from the west end 400 meters. We turn 140 degrees to the right and then walk 235 meters to get to the other end. That leaves 40 degrees as an angle on the other side of that 140 degrees. So now let's label x to be the distance between the ends of the lake. Now we have a triangle with two sides, 400 and 235, and an angle between them, 40 degrees. We're going to find the other side length using the law of cosines. Specifically, x squared is 400 squared plus 235 squared minus 2 times 400 times 235 times the cosine of 40 degrees. In general, the law of cosines will have as the single squared term on the other side, the side across from the angle used in that form of the law of cosines. 
So since we were looking for the side across from 40 degrees, we were going to have x squared is 400 squared, 235 squared minus 2 times the product of those two times the cosine of 40 degrees. There are no unknowns on the right, so we can just compute that. x squared is about 71,000 and some change. We can then take a square root, ignoring the negative square root, and conclude that x is about 266.85. Next up. To find the height of the Taj Mahal, two sightings are taken from ground level to the tip of the spire of the building. From one point on the ground, we measure an angle of elevation to the tip of 16.7 degrees. We then walk 500 feet closer to the building and measure a new angle of elevation of 38.66 degrees. How tall is the Taj Mahal? This is a classic surveying problem to find the height of an unknown object. Measure an angle of elevation, walk directly towards it a known distance, and measure a new angle of elevation. So here is a sketch of our problem. We've got the Taj Mahal. From a certain point, we measure an angle of elevation of 16.7 degrees. We then walk 500 feet directly towards the building and measure a new angle of elevation of 38.66 degrees. There are two triangles we're going to form from this picture. So here are the two triangles that we want to work with. First, we have a right triangle, the smaller triangle on the right, but then we have a non-right triangle involving that length of 500. Note that 500 only refers to the distance between the two marked angles and not the entire base there. So what we want to find is y, the height of the Taj Mahal. We can't find it immediately, but what we're going to do is do some work on that non-right triangle on the left first. Specifically, we're going to find the obtuse angle as 180 degrees minus 38.66 and mark that off as 141.34 degrees. Now in that triangle, we have two angles and a side between them. So we can find the remaining angle in the left triangle to be 21.96 degrees. Now we're going to use the law of sines to find h, the hypotenuse of this right triangle. Now since we have two angles and one side length, the law of sines is recommended here. So the sine of 16.7 degrees divided by h would be the same as the sine of 21.96 degrees divided by 500. Therefore we can solve for h, and it's approximately 384.21. So we mark off this hypotenuse of the right triangle as 384.21. Now let's look at that smaller right triangle on the right. We can find its height. Because it's a right triangle, we know the hypotenuse length and we know the angle 38.66 degrees there. So the sine of 38.66 degrees would be the unknown opposite side of y divided by the hypotenuse of 384.21. We can then solve for y, and this is approximately 240. Next, the goalposts on a football field are 360 feet apart. A drone is flying somewhere over the field. Using a camera on the drone, the pilot measures an angle of depression towards one goalpost as 23 degrees and to the other as 47.5 degrees. And we're going to assume that the drone is somewhere directly between the two goalposts. We measure this angle of 23 degrees and this one of 47.5. And the goalposts are 360 feet apart. What is the elevation of our drone? Now first what we're going to do is make the triangle on the inside our focus. And we're going to use the fact that alternate interior angles of parallel lines are uh, congruent. So this blue angle here and that one over there we know the value of. Their measures are the same, 23 degrees and 47.5 degrees. Now we're going to let h mark off the height of the drone, which is an altitude that forms two right triangles in our diagram. What we don't know is how it splits up the bottom length of 360 feet. We are not at the midpoint. We can't just split this up as 180 and 180. So to find h, let's work with the large triangle whose base is 360. So here is our large triangle whose base is 360. We know these two angles of 23 and 47.5 degrees respectively. So now we can find the angle at the top of the triangle. It's what's missing from 180, that's 109.5 degrees. The altitude we've marked h does not split this nicely in half. We don't know how it's divided, but we now have a triangle. We have all three angles and we know one side. So let's let x be the side opposite the 47.5 degree angle. You could do the other side, we're just making this choice here. 
So we're labeling this x. Now we're going to use the law of sines to solve for x. The sine of 47.5 degrees divided by the length across from it, which we called x, must be equal to the sine of 109.5 degrees divided by the length across from that, which is 360. We can now solve for x and approximate it to 281.57 feet. Now, to find the height of the drone, we have a right triangle that we can exploit. We know that that length x is 281.57 feet. We are trying to find this altitude, this h, that forms a right triangle, and we know we have an angle of 23 degrees in the left. So we can use the sine of 23 degrees to be the length opposite, which is the height of the drone, divided by 281.57. We can solve this for h and approximate it to 110 feet. Next, a ship is traveling from New Orleans to Tampa. The two ports are 500 nautical miles apart. But to avoid a tropical storm somewhere along the route, the ship's captain adjusts the heading to be 30 degrees off from a straight line. But after traveling 200 nautical miles, the weather is clear enough to redirect and head straight to Tampa. So the distance would be 500 nautical miles. However, there's a storm somewhere. So we go off course by 30 degrees. Once we've traveled 200 nautical miles, we can now go directly towards Tampa. But how far away are we? Also, what angle do we have to turn the ship in order to go straight to our destination? So here's our diagram. Let's figure out first how far away we are from Tampa. So this is a law of cosines calculation because we're going to form a triangle labeling the unknown distance as x. We now know two lengths and we know an angle between them of 30 degrees. Note this is not a 30, 60, 90 triangle because we don't necessarily have a right angle here. So by the law of cosines, we can set this up to solve for x. x squared is 200 squared plus 500 squared minus two times the product of 200 and 500 times the cosine of 30 degrees. This works out to be x squared is 116,000 and change. We take the square root to get that x is about 341.75 nautical miles. So now we have a diagram where we know that distance of 341.75 nautical miles. The question now is, how do we have to turn the ship to head straight towards our destination of Tampa? The angle we want to find is this angle here of theta. It's not necessarily the angle inside the triangle because that's not how we're turning. Since we were headed away from New Orleans, we need to turn to the left in this diagram by the angle theta. So what we're gonna do is find a supplementary angle here inside the triangle. We're gonna use the law of cosines, okay? If you're trying to find an unknown angle and note that this will be the largest angle in the triangle because it is across from the largest side, so we should use the law of cosines. Then we set up and get 500 squared equals 200 squared plus 341.75 squared minus two times 200 times 341.75 times the cosine of A. We can solve this for the cosine of A and take an arc cosine of both sides to get that A is 133 degrees almost exactly. Since A, the supplementary angle, is 132.98 degrees, we solve that theta, the amount by which we need to turn, is 47.02 degrees.